Hi, this is Mark Anderson and I've been asked to demonstrate how you can use Google Docs to create a form. Um, so to get started you'll need to have a Google account and uh, once you've got that go into Google Docs and to do a form you need to go to where it says create just here, click create and then choose form. Now Google Forms will give you uh, two blank questions, sample questions to start with. I will start at the top and give it a title, uh, so I'm going to call this Sample Form 2 because I've got one just here at the top which uh, I've already started, I'll show you in a moment. You can put some text underneath to help people understand what needs to be done in order to fill it out, so like fill in the questions please, whatever you want it to say. And then you've got a variety of different types of questions that you can ask. So if you've got uh, the first one here, oftentimes you'll put name, and the help te text is a section where you will type something in to help people know what to fill in in that section so you know, please enter your name would be a start there okay and you can make these some questions required or you can make it so it's not required up to you I generally choose required so you get as much data as possible when you're filling in one of these forms so you just do that and then you click done and when you're ever editing a question you've got a number of options on the side over here you've got the first one here which is to edit it if you set one up which is quite complicated, um, and you might see some of those in a moment, choose duplicate or if it's just gone wrong you can just delete it. I'm going to edit this one and um, there are lots of different types of um, questions you can ask in the form and they are text, paragraph text, multiple choice, you can read. Uh, I'll go through each of these in just a moment. Uh, so this one's going to be paragraph text, uh, explain what you have learnt today. Uh, and no more than 140 characters. I really should have closed down TweetDeck before I started this. And make that require a question as well. So you go in and you fill all your questions out as you want in your survey or in your form. So over here on this sample form 1, uh, I've got some questions I've already filled in. So there's the standard text question there. There's a paragraph question here. This one here is a multiple choice, and note the students or anyone filling in this form can only choose one of those options. Okay, that's the multiple choice one. This one here is very similar, okay, um, but it's not multiple choice, um, it is checkboxes. And the big difference here is that whilst you have got a multiple choice, you can choose the options more than once when the, uh, somebody's filling in the question. You can also have um, an option where people can choose an answer from a list. Okay, so you have the question type choose from a list, from all the other ones, and you type in what the options are. The next one is one which is called a scale, where you can ask people to give a score 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 on a question of your choice. So, you know, what do you think of my teaching? and so people can then rate it one to five and it would look like this now the next one down is very very similar again but what you can actually do on this one here is called a grid and you can actually have more than one thing which is actually written down on a scale okay now here you only got one to five so it's a bit different from what you have on the scale one which you can, you can go to one to ten on that but with this one it's only one to five so you go through and build up your quiz, and it's like that. Now, if you want to be a bit more complicated, let's say you wanted a different set of questions for different age groups, what you could do is actually um, go to a page based on their answer, and you can create multiple pages within a form. I'm not going to show you how to do that today, but it is quite self-explanatory. If you tick that, then you need to put a page break in, and that enables you to then make multiple pages and you can then choose which page they go to based on the answer that they choose. So, that's the form pretty much done anyway for this sample form. Now, it will look like this when it's done. Okay, now it's quite plain. So what you can do, actually, is change a few things and I always like to do that just to make it look a bit more personalised. So back on your um, edit form uh, has it gone uh, here where it says theme you can click on there and then choose different themes 
to actually be applied to your quiz or form or survey, whatever it is you're using it for. And so there it is. It puts it all in. Looks nice. And apply it when you're done. What you can also do over here, you'll see there's more actions. You can get some embed code. So not only can you actually give this link to people down the bottom here or email it to them so they can fill in your form. Okay, you can actually um, save you having to do that, emailing it around. You can put it onto a blog post or a page somewhere online, uh, onto your school's website or anything like that. Click embed and you just get the code that you need to put into the HTML on your page, which works really, really well. What you can also do is edit confirmation. And so when someone finishes filling in your survey or your quiz or whatever it is you've made, Okay, you can actually write a bespoke message that goes to people. So you could say, uh, okay, and you can also choose to have a response summary of all the answers chosen come up in that little window that comes after you've clicked submit afterwards as well. Save that and it all works. So if I now go to this address here then, here it is. What is your name? Uh, my name is Mark. Okay, well, I, th I think they are great. How old are you? Uh, well, I wish for thinking I'm 15. Uh, I like chocolate a lot so I'll take all of those and I also like, um, what else do I like? Uh, let's say dairy milk. Capital of Paris, France, Let's give the answer away. I think you knew it anyway. Paris. Uh, my teaching, oh, superb, superb. Ease of use for Google Forms, I think it's very easy. Can you play with it? Well, mm, not sure about that one. Uh, are my instructions clear? I'd hope so. Navigation, very good. And support, I think this is quite supportive. And submit. And then, thank you for completing the quiz. That's up you one. That's the personalised message. Okay. And you can go back and look at other things from that as well. So that's that. Now, once you're done, how do you see all the results? When people are filling this in in your class, in your um, classroom or wherever it is you're doing it, how can you see the results? Well, if you go back into your navigation and go through to your sample form that you've done, you will go through to a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet is really, really powerful. Every person who fills in your form, you'll sit and as you, if you're watching it live as they're being filled in, you'll see all of these fill in as they're going down. Now, what's really, really powerful again is if you've chosen to use particularly multiple choice options in your form, okay, you can actually do some really, really powerful analysis of your responses really, really quickly. And you do that by going to the form menu and going to show summary of responses. And when you click on that, you'll see how many responses you've had, who's responded, and you can see graphically and statistically the responses to your different questions. I think Google Forms is really, really powerful. I've used it in lots of different ways. I've used it to survey staff, to survey students. Our students fill in a Google Form at the start of all of their lessons to set their own targets for the lesson. In some lessons they record their own personal learning outcomes for the session, particularly when they're doing coursework. That's a really good idea when you're doing something like controlled assessments and you have a record then which you can access anytime, anywhere, um, where you can see what students have been doing. Also, you can use it to track and monitor the work that students have been doing in your class over time. Google Forms, super, super powerful. And not only can you view it using uh, your Mac or your PC or your laptop, you can also access Google Forms through your tablet, even through your mobile device. Google Forms, super powerful, super great. I hope you make great use of them. I'd like to take this opportunity as well to say thank you to Chris Baker at Edu Baker who first put me onto these back at a teaching meet about 18 months ago. Really, really changed the way I work in so many different ways and I'm really thankful that I went to that event. Thanks Chris. Thank you. Mark Anderson, ICT Evangelist. I'm out.